Okay, fine. Okay. And yeah, if you want to talk, if you want to interrupt, if you want to ask something, please feel free to do it rather in chat or just raise your hand. Or if you feel like it, just unmute yourself. We are a tiny group of people of uh, there were uh, around 60 registered. I'm not sure how many will join today, uh, but uh, feel free. Let me check how many are we now. Uh, 18 so we are a tiny group of uh, motivated people so please if you want to talk just talk and uh, yeah please uh, I see that some of you already started writing uh, introduce yourself write in the chat maybe you will find some uh, nice networking opportunities here so write who you are where are you from uh, what do you do and uh, yeah, connect to each other. I strongly encourage people to connect in because you never know what uh, networking might bring to you. And networking in community is a very powerful thing. So we are here to network and to uh, expand our uh, network and community. And I will start. Uh, usually uh, we run this event with two co-hosts. Uh, unfortunately, Diana got sick, uh, but I didn't remove Diana from slides because uh, uh, she is with us in her heart. And uh, I will also um, uh, I will also say, um, uh, introduce Diana as well. So I am Olga, and I am the co-founder uh, and CEO of Workademy. Workademy is a modern LMS for growing businesses. I am also a software engineer and I'm passionate about everything L&D. And this is why uh, we at Workademy, we are doing these events because we love to talk about learning and development, the newest trends, challenges, and all these things. And uh, Diana, who is not with us today and we hope she will recover very soon. Uh, I, uh, she is a chief operational officer from Edera. Edera is one of the best online education studios in Ukraine. Um, I heard someone talking, if you, you want to talk or it was it just an accident? Um, I don't know, I will continue. Uh, <laughs> So Edera is a go-to studio when it comes to development of online educational programs. Uh, and Edera covers the full development cycles, starting from R&D, market research, and uh, finalizing with full production, professional production. Uh, so Edera is doing this for over 10 years and uh, for large spectrum of partners, starting from public sector to corporate sector and for more than uh, for almost half a million users and, by the way, hosted at Workademy platform. And with that, um, I pass the mic to our expert today, uh, Carolina. Carolina, uh, please introduce yourself. I'm super excited to have you with us. I love your expertise. I love your posts. I love what you write and what you say. And uh, thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you, Olga. I'm, I'm really delighted to, to be here as a speaker today. I have participated in quite a few um, l and Happy Space events before as a, as a participant, some being on the other uh, end. Um, and I'm really happy to be here today and share with you some of my expertise and um, lessons learned, uh, some the tough way. Um, I will uh, show myself on a second screen in a second, in a second but not to... <clears throat> cut mid sentence. I have a lot of years of experience across all things LD connected, starting with LD projects and products, uh, languages, which is basically where I originated from, doing a lot of consulting, um, power skills, teaching, and also LD. So I have seen a lot. I've been there and I've done that. And hopefully I'll be able to answer some of your questions um, today. But I also want to share with you some of the things that I have learned, have observed uh, on the way, hopefully also, <clears throat> sorry, um, backed by by evidence and science um, in, in the solutions um, so that we can all have a very 
good understanding of how can we make certain things in our spectrum of, of learning, of design, better, quicker, and faster, because that's what you're all here for. So uh, if that's uh, the right moment, Olga, I should steal the screen right now, probably, right? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay, <laughs> not good. Yet. <laughs> I will let you know. We still have some uh, some things. So first of all, uh, it's important to for us to be on the same page. This event is for everyone interested in developing uh, pro training programs for learning and development professionals, for HR professionals, and for anyone who genuinely interested in these uh, topics. Um, and. Um, our expectations out of it is that we brainstorm, we inspire each other, we have this networking, and most important, we have fun. It's middle of the week, it's Wednesday, it's uh, literally middle of the day, not for everyone, probably, but uh, uh, for for me and Carolina, for sure. <laughs> uh, I know that uh, we are super international here, but yeah, uh, let's have some fun and uh, let's uh, uh, bootstrap this midweek uh funny things and we have some learning outcomes uh today so we will what after this event we hope that uh, you our participants you will uh, get some insights on cutting edge um learning design skills, identify some common challenges that slow down training development, explore steps uh, that Carolina will describe that help to efficiently design learning curricula and discover some outdated practices. So this is uh, what we hope to achieve by the end of this uh, session. With your help, of course, because without your questions and your participation, we don't know whether or not we, we achieve this. And now, yes, now we switch. <laughs> Let's switch then. Okay, perfect. Awesome. I hope you can already uh, see my screen. Um, I have already told you a bit of my uh, background and history, but what brings me uh, here today specifically is... Uh, um, my role also at Bots and People, as you can see, I'm a senior learning experience designer. And uh, just a very brief uh, uh, intro of, of what we do. We basically enable companies in their digital upskilling. So uh, I do have about a, a bit of a background right now um, with all these uh, very powerful and fashionable IT things happening in the background. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to escape this topic, although I know it's it's everywhere you open, the fridge is there. Um, but we'll see how we can uh, use and, and leverage some of the tools. Um, but uh, we, this won't be the, the core focus of today. So no worries if you're sick and tired of hearing about AI all the time. What we will focus on today is how to develop um, training programs faster uh, on a couple of planes. So there are a lot of things that you have to take into consideration and a lot of things you have to learn and use when you want to do these things faster and still keep the same quality. And that's why I also name it the ultimate uh, skill set of uh, L and D. So how to develop training programs faster, but the core of it is understanding what kind of skill set we all need to uh, make it work. Okay. So we are all moving into uh, an era, an age of new age of work and meaningful work. And this is relevant not only to uh, the people that we are trying to upscale and train as, as learning professionals. We want to make them more proficient and efficient um, in their jobs. That's why we are offering them all kinds of trainings and learning solutions. But we as, as learning designers or L&D personas, we also want our job to be meaningful. We don't want to spend time uh, manually assigning people to events and calendars. We don't want to check every Excel line one by one. We want to outsource and kind of automate these things. So the meaningful work is there for everyone, not just uh, in terms of our internal uh, customers, the people whom we deliver the trainings to, but also for ourselves. And how could this be done? Um, in order to design anything and deliver anything, there are these five steps that have to happen. And what are uh, the official name? Excuse uh, me. Uh, no, uh, I think. Oh, 
There's one more your analysis the same as double I'm I sorry. A. Sorry. Uh, yes. I just pressed the mute button, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I thought there was a question. Okay. Uh, so coming back, um, in order to uh, to take a look at what has to be done and how it can be done, um, we I would like us to take a look at the ideal situation. So the ideal top five steps that I think are working um, in designing either the curricula or any kind of learning intervention, any kind of learning initiative. Um, what are these? I, I assume they won't be a, a big surprise to you if you take a look at them. And it says top five. But if you count them, it's actually six. Uh, however, if you take a closer look, research set, uh, is here used twice. Why? <clears throat> because research is, what I understood is research is understanding the needs, taking a look at your data, doing a very thorough um, need analysis that always has to happen at the beginning. Otherwise, we will be just walking in the dark, um, not really knowing what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do that. Um, and I'll come back to that in a second we'll be, when we'll be talking about the challenges. Um, so understanding what's happening, knowing um, how far you can go, what your limitations are, is absolutely essential. And this should be a continuous process. Uh, so it's not really actually just after step four, after step three being step four, but it should be a continuous working in a background uh, approach. Then the second part is prototyping, because prototyping, especially with uh, today's tools is super easy. You can launch a product and I would like us also to take a look at the learning initiatives and um, learning events that we are organizing uh, or any kind of learning solution as products, right? The learners are going to be using it. Um, we can create the prototype, the MVP, minimum viable product for our, um, um, our initiative in sometimes number of uh, in a matter of hours or days right now. And with the prototype, we can already test and no. Um, so this is making it super quick, doesn't it? Uh, someone comes to you and says, hey, I, I really need to solve this problem. And you come up with the analysis and then you have a prototype and you can already test it and see if it's working. So the approach uh, is incredibly important. And if you look at the following steps, which is also validating, so testing with, with your learners, with your users, and then improving based on the data and then repeating the whole process. This basically is the design thinking approach. Um, and it works, right? And especially if we're, again, coming back to thinking of learning as a product that we're delivering, a word which I don't like using, but it kind of does the job in this case. So whenever you're delivering this learning item, uh, you're delivering a product, right? So this product approach is really helpful. Um, and prototyping early is speeding up the process because, as I said, you already have the product very quickly, and then you don't have to keep uh, improving, um, or maybe not improving. Improving is all is an ongoing process, but repairing something that is really uh, sorry. The balloons always go off because I do something with my hands. <laughs> it's a matter of the operational system that I'm using, so you can expect all kinds of weird things happening. Um, I was speaking of the the product approach. Yeah, so uh, having all these steps uh, fall into place and understanding that this is a, a product that we need to test with users. Prototyping early, uh, this already is speeding things uh, up and we don't get caught into figuring something very big, delivering something very big that takes a lot of time and money and effort, only to find out at the moment that this is not what's needed, which is the waterfall um, type of product management, project management approach. And um, sometimes EDI is used as a learning methodology, which it's not. EDI is just a project management approach, basically uh, stuck in the waterfall um, methodology. Okay, but I'm talking about the steps. The steps maybe sound a little bit vague to you. Maybe you have already seen them. Um, let's take it a bit further. So when you have this ideal five steps in this process and you want to design your initiatives within these steps, there will be some challenges, right? There are going to be some roadblocks. Sometimes it's it's good to have challenges. It's good to be challenged. It's good to have someone say, hey, are you sure this is going to work? But the challenges we are talking about are actually slowing us down. Um, and let's take a look at some of the common ones. Um, by the way, I'll be discussing them, but I would also love you to think for a moment and I'll ask you to, to raise them uh, openly here in a moment. What are your challenges, the one that you're facing? Because the ones that I'm most uh, often facing is we needed for 
for now, which basically is yesterday. Can you have, can, can we have something that is ready for now or literally yesterday or last week? Because I don't know, we didn't get to you on time. Or can you customize it? Because our culture is very special. We do things differently, right? Um, this is not going to work for us. We need it in a bit different manner. Um, so this is also stopping you, right? Because you, you, they come to you with a certain mindset and working with this mindset is the, the first difficult thing. And one of my favorites is we know what we need, just do it, which translates into we think we know what we want, just do it, right? Um, the idea of confusing wants with need in business is prevalent, unfortunately. And this is one of the biggest, I think, struggles of every role in an organization doing a little bit of a, of a consultancy. So all HR uh, business partners, L&D people, whenever you're trying to uncover the problem, they say they know. Uh, and wanting something that is fancy and shiny is not necessarily the same as answering a real problem and uh, uncovering the real need. And um, I, I used to also do a, a workshop on business need analysis for l and um, I was using this framework that we were defining symptoms, right? Then we were taking a look like what the symptoms, um, what is causing the symptoms? So what is the problem? And then what is the relationship between the problem and the need? So kind of what kind of a solution would actually alleviate the problem? Um, but this is very often skipped. We're just saying this is what we need, uh, understood as this is what we want. Um, I would love to hear now if you have the same challenges or if you have any other challenges. There are probably tons of, uh, of more of them. Yeah, Olga, I think you, you raised your hand, right? Yeah, uh, while um, people are writing their challenges, or maybe someone also wants to uh, unmute themselves, I um, want to tell that I can relate. I come from software development background, and in software development, we also develop products that help solve business needs or challenges. And uh, the, chal the, the challenges that we were facing as software or product developers are super similar to this, like uh, we need it now for yesterday today uh, uh we know what we need just put a button here and you mm -hmm. and yeah now i learned to ask uh, okay sure you need this button but what challenge do you want to solve with this what problem occurred that made you think that you need a button here and then after we analyze this uh problem we realize that it's not a button that we need and actually mm -hmm. to remove some things uh and my favorite one is isn't it just and then <laughs> oh yes <laughs> absolutely it's all sort of things isn't it just adding authentication system or whatever and you're like mm -hmm. oh. yeah i love this isn't it just i think many people are faced with that yes i i haven't thought of that but it's just this under misunderstanding right mm -hmm. not knowing what lies underneath absolutely i love this example mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have Asia that wrote, "We are bringing you the materials and do do it something, do something with it." <laughs> yes, absolutely. Just do something. Just do something. <laughs> do your magic. Uh huh. But actually, this is showing a lot of trust, right, in you that they trust you to do something good with I it. Wanted so. to just add that it's um yeah. about this that uh, someone is bringing you ready, for instance, like the meeting of the about the demo in the zoom without like consulting with you how you will like record this and then like bringing you and do something with this so mm -hmm. don't have such big like influence of this uh how will be the yeah. quality of the content you are receiving the material you are not subject matter expert and then uh you should create out of this something and actually no one uh, have dedicated the time to speak with you about this mm -hmm. how want to create this so then like it can, can be some frustration come on I'm not the expert in this topic and uh, it's dedicating much more time uh, from the like learner team side to understand what parts are the most crucial and so on and so on and then like having this like uh, sometimes frustration like it was here also written that subject matter experts not responding so often or in really mm -hmm. time questions which we're coming to addressing to them mm. absolutely yeah so on the one hand 
I, 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 I'm wondering if this is trusting that you are the expert in your field and you're going to do something magical with it or is it <laughs> some other naive type of thinking but definitely these organizational structural issues like not being able to communicate with the subject matter expert not being consulted not being taken seriously this is a whole huge bucket of of problems where we're facing uh, as as learning professionals um and it, this was always this has always been my least favorite part the thing that you cannot get things across but absolutely a very good idea thank you uh, Asia. Yeah, Do you have any other comments? Mm -hmm. Same is as a response time for queries. Yeah, uh, we we had a, even a full L and D happy space dedicated to uh, working with the SMEs. I think maybe it was even with you, Asia. I'm not sure. Um, no. Um, yeah, yeah, we were speaking about SME. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because th this is a, a whole topic: how to how to work and uh, make it work. Um, then we have Tamara that wrote, I, I totally relate to this, with soft power skills, especially it's very hard to define a core problem, analyzing mm -hmm. learning needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, talking about need analysis is another huge topic that we could devote hours and hours to uh, talking, but definitely um, the needs versus wants uh, shoves in here as well. Um, and as you Olga said, asking the right questions, not giving them any, like not suggesting certain answers is also very difficult because we kind of have a tendency to think of a solution already because we're just human and ask the questions in such a way so not so as not to suggest any solutions. It's it's tricky, but it's doable, definitely. Yeah, and uh, uh, from Tamara as well, our recent case, we had this training with the speaker five years ago. We liked her. Can you organize it again? But for totally new markets and dozens of new employees without proper onboarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not understanding your audiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, audience analysis. Um, all right, so we uh, have these challenges and we have a bunch of people who can relate to this. So, Carolina, so, you have some already. Yes. So let's let's move let's move forward away from the challenges and let's maybe see how we can yeah. um, steadily um, solve them. So, what we want to do here today is leave the outdated training development practices behind, move forward to something more structured, more efficient um, and how I understand it works we as LD people or learning professionals need to embrace the essential skills for training development basically ourselves and what does that mean in practice if we want to speed things up I thought of having these two types of skill set and I divided them in two the first one being um, the technical skill set and I mean here knowing how to use certain tools knowing which methodologies as tools work best and speed things up. And the second part is the mental skill set. Uh, so how you should be approaching and thinking about the design in the first place. So uh, the design rules that we should be taking into consideration, design rules as, as tools, but also tools that facilitate those, um, those rules. Um, I put content creation first and then I uh, crossed it out because we, I think, are really well informed right now by now how to create more content with AI or any other uh, available tools. Um, there is content overload. There has been content overload even without the use of AI. And I think we should be moving away from it as far and as quickly as possible. I'm not saying we're not going to develop new content. We probably will. Uh, but I think already as a lot has been said and done in, in these terms, and that's not something I would like to be uh, focusing on here. Um, because uh, what we should be focusing on and where I do see the um, the leverage of using either AI or uh, all kinds of automations is actually in designing uh, either curricula or interactions. Um, with a couple of clicks with uh, tools such as Wacademy itself, you can have a, a, a curriculum, curriculum ready uh, or a, a, an interaction designed basically. Um, so you can um, yourself take some time to analyze your audience, to think about that, 
uh, put the mental effort, but you can also have a support of AI to match the audience, the learning objectives that you know of. Uh, or maybe there are some already standardized one that you could also use in a, cer in a certain uh, toolbox. Um, and with a couple of clicks, you can have a whole curriculum basically generated for you. So not so much content that will fill um, um, uh, the journey or the curriculum, but more think about how to best structure the learning journey, how to connect these elements, what should be prior to what. Um, we all humans do it best, right? But if we are able to train maybe some learning uh, or instructional design models, we can do it even quicker. And obviously I'm not saying let's not check it, let's check it, let's validate, uh, but we can really do it in a couple, in a, in a matter of couple of minutes, sometimes even seconds, if it's a short one, um, to have the whole step-by-step -step process designed. Um, what is really important is that we don't um, fall back on a simplistic approach. So uh, in order for this to be quick, but also efficient and evidence-based, we need to make sure that whatever um, uh, training um, or training content we provide to the models that would potentially do that is in accordance with the rules so that we know that there needs to be scaffolding for certain topics so that uh, we know how to connect um, uh, the dots there. It's not that easy and it does require human thinking or human connecting uh, skills. That's why it originally might be a bit more time consuming to train your own model to figure out your own AI solution, but it's doable. And uh, the thing that I absolutely love is interaction design. And this is something I'm still kind of missing in the market because it's incredibly difficult. By interaction design, what I mean is that for us, it's still time consuming. Uh, we need to analyze a lot of things to make sure that we are um, delivering and producing the right interaction for the right type of skill. So for motor skills, you should have a different uh, type of content being shown, for example, and then practice. So if you want someone to learn to ride a bike, you're not going to describe it to them with text or words, you're going to show it to them. And I would love to see the AI tools knowing that a motor skill should be shown first, uh, then it can be practiced uh, motorically, physically, and then there is some feedback that should be applied. I think this is still missing because this goes way deeper into large data sets that I don't think um, the, the, the programs are being um, trained on yet. Uh, but this would speed up our, our job immensely, right? So I need these people to learn how to operate a machine. I need them to do A, B, and C. And then uh, any kind of AI helper in the background would be able to come up with interactions, with tasks, um, with, with also maybe content somehow to cater to this particular skill. And this should be done skill by skill or skill specific, solution specific, and not um, uh, from, from like a bird, bird eye, bird, bird's eye view perspective, from killer care, killer care design perspective. Um, and I would love to see uh, AI tools doing that. That would immensely speed them the delivery process. The two remaining things here that I put within um, asterisks are uh, learning methodologies and mechanisms. Uh, they are quite simple. They're not really, I would say, AI based. They are more like machine learning uh, algorithms that would help us to um, structure the material and make sure that it sticks. So spaced repetitions for any type of tasks or knowledge items. If you have to remember some information, it's perfect. If you have to perform a task, it will help you uh, um, with um, scheduling the task performance so that you, you are performing that at um, spe uh, specific intervals and it's not being forgotten. And also simulations uh, scenarios are the best solutions if you want to um, create an interaction that involves decision-making and feedback and reflection, which is the core of every interaction that you're doing. So having these two elements, space repetitions and simulation scenarios, uh, as always implementable solutions, they will also be like the ready thing you can just take off the shelf and put into your con into your course, into your development. It will always be useful. It will always foster a learning transfer. It will always yield results and it's always reusable. So these two mechanisms, um, when you're creating something and you put these two in, 
bam, you have a better effect and it's super quick. So knowing what type of tools and technologies and methodologies to use is absolutely uh, relevant. So these were the design rules in terms of technical skills. And I also wanted to mention some mental uh, skill set. I already mentioned research before. So understanding, doing research, um, knowing what's going on. And it's not just understanding your audience, your your the needs of your audience, the, the characteristics of your audience, but also understanding what tools are there and being always on top of the game, right? So it might initially be a, a bit time consuming to start this whole process off, but once you have a, a good habit of doing constant research, you will never be uh, taken aback by something. You will never be surprised. And uh, also having this broad knowledge or at least a repository of something to look through uh, will be incredibly helpful if um, an urgent need for yesterday pops up because you already will have some um, um, something to work on. And also the cognitive skills. So thinking about how you can approach that. Um, the, the design thinking approach is incredibly important. Um, and the final thing is technology and automation. So I spoke a little bit about the AI tools that you can um, that you can use. Um, all these things for interaction design or uh, for uh, curriculum design, they will leverage your prototyping, right? You can prototype in a, in a day, you can create a prototype for something that would take weeks or maybe even months in the past. And knowing how to do that, having this these um, these skills and the whole um, automation mindset uh, is absolutely relevant. And I'm talking to you about automation as well. Um, it, it it used to be a new topic to me some time ago, but since working with bots and people, I understood that it's all about automation. So all about making sense of what can be outsourced so that you can have this meaningful work. And we're also looking at the things that can be outsourced um, so that our jobs are uh, with the same quality, a bit a bit more efficient. So you can outsource um, administrative tasks, right? We don't want to do that. It will also make things quicker because if we don't have to do that, we have time for the important things. So having this mindset of, yes, I want to embrace technology. Yes, I want to embrace automation where it's relevant is what's um, a being um, uh, a huge uh, game changer, I would say. Um, I wanted to also talk to you a little bit about the, the competency framework we have developed. And I would like to... Um, invite you in a second to take a look at that, um, focusing on the right competencies. But before we do, I wanted to ask you if you have any questions at this point, perhaps, about anything that I have said so far before we delve into the competencies, competencies itself. Um, maybe while uh, while our participants thinks, think of, of the questions to ask, I can add that uh, it seems that uh, the jobs are shifting, right, uh, uh, with the advance in technologies and uh, L&D job is shifting as well. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that we shouldn't be scared that AI will um, steal these jobs. Oh, but uh, uh, learning and development professionals should definitely be prepared uh, to shift their skills and uh, become uh, on a more like strategic uh, uh, side of things than actually like creating content or doing manual tasks. And mm -hmm. this is why this uh, competencies is very important to yeah to embrace. Absolutely. I, I, I had this slide in here uh, because we sometimes use it because it, it's a really good one, but I don't have it in the end, um, which says your job is safe, your role is not. Yeah. Uh, and that's something we we use as, as a, you know, this tagline a little bit, because whatever, if, if you're adaptable, if you want to, this also refers to the mindset and the cognitive skills, if you're willing to adapt a little bit, there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, it's just going to be a different skill set. Maybe you're going to be able to do things faster. You're going to be doing different different things, uh, which doesn't mean that you will have to be now swamped with more work, right? You will be swamped with maybe the meaning, meaningful work instead of the manual repetitive ones. So definitely, um, I do see a shift in, in learning experience design as well. Um, but I think it's going to the better because there are tons of things that I don't enjoy in my work, yeah. manual things. Why should I be doing that if they can be outsourced? 
and no one will take my thinking away. Yeah, that's right. I think it's it's a very exciting times to to leave mm -hmm. to work. Absolutely. Okay, we have uh, Tamara's input. Uh, two thoughts that relate to this from the latest learning technologies conference. A fool with a tool is still <laughs> a fool. Uh, so we have to focus on behaviors, not tools. And we have to empower people, not dumping content on them. Uh, totally, yeah. And th that uh, relates with what you, Carolina, said, that uh, not focusing in this webinar on content creation because it's already a lot of mm -hmm. content and uh, AI tools even help to have even more content. And uh, yeah, it's not good to overwhelm people with content, but yeah, to empower them. Yes, and, and you see the hype with um, video-generated content that it's so easy to generate even more videos. It's fun. But why would you do that? Like watching a talking head for two hours is not going to be cool, right? It's not there for learning. And just because you can use AI doesn't mean you should be using AI or that it's giving you the extra value. I have seen this, someone quoting that in the comment about the AI full tool thingy. Mm -hmm. um, and I totally agree. Um, I think that, uh, I don't want to sound bad, but I think it's a little bit overhyped AI, and we're missing out the relevant points. We're missing out its analysis capacity and capabilities. And I think we should be taking a very close look at how we can do the research part, how we can leverage AI for analysis. And if you take a look at, I, I'm going to show this, this competency framework in more details um, in a second, but we do have a lot of anal analysis there because analyzing things, so going over huge amounts of data is something that AI can do much better with fewer mistakes or no mistakes at all. Um, and that's something that we should be uh, focusing on. Like the creative part is, still can be on our end. Uh, whichever uh, language model I'm using, it's always very bad at creating original texts. And I kind of ended up doing that. Uh, I, I ended up doing that myself. And I uh, feel like the texts written by Gen AI are just all the same and weird. So it's yeah. not going to take over the creativity. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. Sometimes you look at some posts and you, okay, chat GPT. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, but uh, yeah, it definitely helps with structure and uh, yeah, should be used more for analysis. And as for the video generated content, I think it's still um, good that these tools exist. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hopefully they will be evolving into more like also suggestion, how should you structure video and cutting on the video length because yeah, yeah. two hours video is not good. And uh, I, I hopefully these tools will evolve into that more mm -hmm. like helping you with the structuring it and making it short and straight to the point than yeah, just uh, speaking. Absolutely. I mean, using video is a very good thing provided that it's used for the right skill, what I talked about before. What I don't like is having these talking hats and these avatars popping out of everywhere. And the fact that you can have, like train your own avatar looking like you and talking, this is super fun, but it's not really translating into relevant learning outcomes or learning transfer in the end, right? So apart from it being fun, it doesn't bring the, the learning value uh, in this format. But if I could have a video generated in minutes on um, a topic, I don't know, showing a process or something that I really need to have. And it's difficult to produce that with, uh, you know, a team of experts, a studio and things like that. That's obviously a win, right? But we have to make sure that what we're generating is making sense. Yeah, and having a, an avatar talking, still not being perfect, it's the, the, the kind of cringy thing I think we have to be very careful about. Yeah. Um. Do we have any other questions? Because if not, then I can um, swiftly move on. Yeah, I think you can proceed and uh, you, people can still write questions. Sure, absolutely. And you can so, so this is the competency framework we have um, worked on. And it originally um, covers business process automation. That's where our business roots are from. But it, uh, if you take a look at these three pillars, so business acumen, um, process automation, process excellence, and uh, automation solutions, 
um, it covers very closely the skills that learning professionals also need to have. Um, and taking a look at, at each and um, each one of them. So, for example, this business acumen part. Um, these are the skills that help you with doing the analysis, right? So, understanding what are the needs of your uh, of your stakeholders, of your learners, of your clients, whoever you're working for, whatever the setup is. Um, having this project approach, understanding how you have to structure everything. Uh, making sure that you are managing the stakeholders and the change in the organization, right? So these skills are absolutely relevant um, to understand how your product is going to make an impact. So having this business uh, mindset, so to speak, and um, I think there is a good trend of moving L&D and learning towards the strategic business organizational impact rather than just having them dispersed across organization, not being... Um, like centralized in terms of the outcomes. So this business acumen is absolutely relevant also for uh, HR or, or, or learning departments. Now, if you take a look at process excellence, so perhaps if, if you don't have very robust processes, these skill sets are not going to be that much relevant. Um, but if you have any kind of a process, even if it's setting up an event, Right. Um, or you know, doing calendar invitations or onboarding, I think it's a very good example. Then there are certain steps to be taken, then understanding how this can be automated, how this can be streamlined and, and made simple is uh, is essential to, to making things quicker and easier for you. If you outsource the 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 mundane, the, the repetitive, you still have time for making sure that there are no mistakes on the line man, uh, uh, ha happening. And uh data analysis, what I mentioned before, I think this is still strongly strongly um, undervalued. And I think we should be taking a closer look at all the data we have in the organizations. We sometimes have a ton, but we don't even know about that. And having this uh, access to, to, uh, to data and understanding how data works in your organization will also give you this, uh, this leverage being a step ahead and understanding business needs. So if you observe data in your organization, you can be one step quicker. Before they come to you saying what they want or need, you can already reach out saying, hey, I know what's not working. I'm going to give you a solution, right? So understanding um, this is, is definitely a leverage. And the final part is automation solutions. So a, a bit more technical. What you see on the left-hand side as um, automation technologies, these are specifically certain either technologies or tools um, that would be used for uh, designing and making automation processes happen. So it might, might ne not necessarily be your cup of tea right now, but um, having the tech savviness, so understanding what is the infrastructure in your organization, or at least knowing who to talk to about that, um, knowing what the governance issues is, what is the technical overview of your scope, how much or how further, how far can you go with, uh, with the solutions and technologies? It's also quite uh, quite good uh, and relevant. Um, I'm, I'm not saying you really need to know this or you should know this, but it's good to know the people who know, right? And understand that. But if you take a look to the left-hand side, so intelligent automation, we've got Gen AI and large language models there, uh, conversational, uh, conversational AI and chatbots. That's already what a lot of learning people are doing, right? We're using conversational AI and chatbot, chatbots for feedback, right? Or we can use Gen AI and, and by this large language models to either generate the content that we don't want to do, but we can already leverage this. This is something that's happening. And it's up to you to decide how much you want to understand the mechanisms behind it with machine learning and deep learning. It's, it's not essential, but it's good just to give you an, an overview of the limitations, the restrictions, and the capabilities of the tools. Um, but this is, I think, the most interesting part uh, for us in L&D right now, to understand how these tools are working, what we can expect, and look for specific use cases for ourselves, which usually be making things more efficient and more personalized for the departments. Uh, coming back to the technical skill set, if we're designing a curriculum or an interaction, we have the data we can analyze. We can super strongly personalize the uh, experience, still making it very quick. So I would uh, strongly encourage you to take a look at the AI and automation potential that you have in your organizations, because that's where you can look for uh, the speeding up process in very practical 
uh, practical terms. And if you'd like to um, take a look at um, your competencies, I will in a second share with you uh, a way to do that, a very nice one. Um, but I just wanted to sum it up with the thought that when AI takes over creation, because at some point it might, it might get good enough to be creative enough, uh, you still need to validate. And that's where the human role is, right? No one will take away your thinking. And what we're doing with uh, AI and making things quicker uh, and more efficient is not uh, to outsource thinking. We're supposed to outsource tasks, right? And let's leave the thinking to ourselves. And we don't really need to outsource everything and anything if we don't want to. So uh, summing it up, if you would like to um, take a look at uh, your comp competencies within this framework, please feel free to uh, take this uh, test by bots and people, and you will be shown your uh, competencies and also uh, compared, I think, against some of uh, the profiles that we have also uncovered. Um, and it's a super interesting tool to show you where you are at this line, and it is, it's going to be very practical for you. I'm going to leave it for in here just for a second, but I know Olga will also be showing it uh, later, and we can reshare this. So um, without any further uh, ado, I would love to finish here off. Uh, thanking you very much for having me here and letting me speak for, I don't know, 40 minutes or so. I could talk for much longer. Um, let's connect. And I'm really looking forward to any other questions or comments or whatever you have right now in mind. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carolina. Guys, if you have any questions, any comments, anything, just, uh, or maybe you already opened the competencies, uh, the tool assessment, and you have some questions, just feel free. In the meantime, I will switch to my presentation. Uh, and uh, yeah, here we... So, uh, Carolina already mentioned that uh, at Work Academy we have this uh, uh, AI for designing a course outline, and uh, we what we try to do is uh, not to overwhelm this course with content, but rather focus on backward planning thing. So, what uh, uh, Work Academy's AI gives to you when you ask for a certain topic, you can also feed with extra. Um, uh, context, what it gives to you back is a full course structure and it gives some questions so you can focus on content to help uh, your participants to answer those questions. And it gives just a tiny bit of content just for you to uh, guide yourself and uh, grab some videos from YouTube just to give you an idea how this content might look like but not overwhelming with content because this you can uh, easily generate just to give you an idea of course outline and I ask you please uh, try it out and uh, give me your feedback I would really love to hear it. we want to make it really like instructionally design uh, helper for learning and development managers and for this we would love to hear your feedback uh, to give me your feedback you can write me an email or just schedule a call using this link let me just copy paste the link from where I have it and paste it into the uh, the chat. And uh, yeah, with that, uh, uh, I, uh, I'm done. And uh, yeah, again, we have, uh, if you didn't scan the QR code for um, skills um, assessment tool that Carolina showed. Feel free to, to do it now. And uh, thank you very much for being here. We still have some minutes left. So if you want to share your experience, comment on something or ask anything, just feel free. And please follow us. These are three QR codes for Workademy, Adara and Bots and People. Uh, what you can expect from, from our uh, LinkedIn pages is some updates on EdTech news, updates on learning and development trends. Uh, on our side as Work Academy is updates and there as well is updates on this LD Happy Space event, the next topics and um, yeah, the summary 
of uh, the previous uh, events. And um, yeah, I think that that would be it here. You can still see our LinkedIn links. And yeah, thank you. Thank you all very much for being and for participating because without your participation, this would just turn into Carolina's monologue, uh, which was super nice to hear too, but participation what makes it really engaging and interactive and fun. And yeah, uh, if you don't have any questions or comments, uh, please uh, don't wait uh, until the end of the, <laughs> the webinar. You can um, you can say goodbye and leave. And uh, yeah, thank you, thank you once again. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. All Okay. All right. So I removed everyone <laughs> yeah. and uh, I locked the meeting so no one uh, in, uh, is able to to log in. Do we uh, want to keep recording or should we stop? Uh, good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, no. Okay. Good.